Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today we're gonna to be making you guys the most delicious taco you've ever had made with smoked Wagyu beef ribs. All right, guys, I'm here with my buddy Cody, chef at Myers Garden in Dallas. Cody, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, all right, here's the deal with this taco. Cody and I have been making this taco for years. Uh, we've actually won the People's Choice at a food and wine festival twice. Chefs for Farmers, the premier food and wine festival in Texas, and the line is super long for this thing. We rolled it out again at Fort Worth Food and Wine here this spring, and that night we're like, you know what? We should do a video on this. So. Cody, why don't you tell everybody how the heck this thing came to be? Uh, so I did a precursor event to Chefs for Farmers about, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago. And uh, I did a smoked beef rib taco, um, used holy cow, because it's fantastic on beef. And, Thank you. And uh, did a little more classic version of it. We did some salsa verde and uh, some crushed uh, pork rind chicharron, wherever you want to call it. and. Uh, then it kind of just slowly morphed into this this monster that it is today. So yeah, we um, we started putting this amazing truffle horseradish cream, which we'll talk about, uh, and some other stuff on it. It's evolved over the years, and yep. now it's topped with like what I think is a next level topping. But we'll save that for the very very end. Uh, but starts out with the star of the show, some smoked beef ribs. So let me grab that over here off the mill scale. The cool thing about this mill scale, one of the many cool things, is Cody also has, ooh, those are hot, a 94 gallon offset. It's your I house. do, I do. I have a 94 gallon, uh, affectionately named Dolly, and uh, she's she's great, named her after Matt's dog, though. It's not, uh, <laughs> not Dolly Parton, so. No, so, she's great, they make they make killer killer smokers, and uh, run it's like a, a dream. pleasure to have her, so. So the beef ribs, it's not exactly a beef rib lesson, but this couldn't be any more simple. We've got beef rib videos on our channel, which we'll put a card up to in the corner, but this was simply seasoned with holy cow and smoked for right at eight hours, no wrap, no spritz. These are legitimately right off the pit, but now we're gonna get into, Cody's gonna make uh, our truffle horseradish cream. Yeah. I'll tell you all how that's done while these cool. Yeah, so Matt and I kind of talked about how we're both really big fans of the uh, the steakhouse world and, and um, you know, who doesn't love a big slab of red meat in Texas. So uh, one of my favorite condiments in the world is, is horseradish cream. Uh, and the, the kicker with this one is the truffle, of course, but you know, what doesn't go better with beef than a little truffle. So um, I eyeball this recipe. If you want to use a measuring cup, by all means be my guest, uh, but definitely just use a little bit of sour cream, has like a really nice acidity to it. Uh, and then the best mayonnaise in the world, Dukes. Dukes, the only mayonnaise in my opinion. Um, you can definitely use your favorite mayonnaise if you want to, but Dukes is this way. preferable. So you're basically looking two parts mayonnaise, one part sour cream. And then if you're me, I love a lot, a lot of horseradish. So I'm gonna use about half this jar. I'm so. not mad at that. It's not gonna suck, I promise. <laughs> This uh, recipe will be down in the description and as always on meatchurch.com. But a lot of this from here out is kind of to taste and your preference. It is, it is. And it just depends if you like less horseradish, use less horseradish. Uh, the truffle oil is definitely the biggest to taste part. Um, use a high quality truffle oil uh, or if you're a baller, use real truffles, which uh, See, whichever you want to do. If you've got real truffles in the budget, yeah, knock go yourself for it. out. Uh, but definitely, definitely use a high quality truffle oil. Which, you will, you will thank yourself later and we're both huge fans and friends of truff their hot sauce uh, this is great stuff and then of course you could use regular salt and pepper but why do that when you got holy cow I love you so holy cow to taste um, you know definitely be careful because it's got salt in it but I like a decent amount in there and and then uh, as someone said to me earlier uh, I like to use a lemon just to kind of brighten it up a little bit, but somebody asked me what a lemon cheek was. And uh, to me, it's the best way to cut a lemon to get the perfect amount of juice. 
get no seeds. Squeeze some of that in there. Bam. Just like that. That's it. That already smells epic, super, by the way. Super, super simple. You can smell that truffle all the way over here. But now all we gotta do is we gotta heat up the tortillas, which we'll do on the firebox and the 94, so let's go do that. Cool. These are uh, the fresh butter tortillas made at HEB this morning. The best, the best. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is definitely a cool way to, to warm tortillas. I actually uh, made chicken tacos on my mill scale uh, a couple weeks ago at my house, and while I was standing there waiting for my chicken to finish, I decided to uh, utilize a, a firebox. So threw some tortillas on there, and it worked like a charm. Definitely, Gotta make sure it's clean. Yeah, definitely make sure it's clean. Uh, but the you know you spray your you spray your mill skull down in tallow it definitely adds a little something to your tortillas so yeah we um, we actually tallow these constantly to keep them from rusting yeah so why not yeah. no it uh, just shows you the versatility of the equipment for sure how long do you think probably 20 30 seconds aside just so they get nice and warm all the way through I think we're good cool. All right, it's time to make some tacos. Yeah, you know, as that, that Laker that's not in the playoffs would say, it's Taco Tuesday, right? <laughs> wow, <laughs> it actually is Taco Tuesday. Go Maps. What are the odds of us filming this on a Tuesday? I know, right? Right. It was not planned. No, it was not planned. Well, I mean, it was kind of planned. You're you're off on Monday and Tuesday from Myers Garden, they, so here we are. They let me out of the building on those days, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can pull these bones or not. I'll have to find out. Oh, yeah. All right, I gotta get the bones off the, woo, yeah, they come right out. Sucker's hot. Yeah, still a little warm. We're not giving these a proper rest, and that's gonna have to be okay. Because I'm not waiting. Dolly's got some treats for later. Oh, my dog is down here like, like, please, daddy. Please, daddy. She knows. Let me get, so the membrane's still on here, so loosely. Get that off there. Get that aside. Man, these are jiggly. Oh, I got your tortilla a little dirty with my holy right. cow. All right, it's just gonna add flavor. Chop this up a little bit. Here, actually, let me throw this away. Get you a little sampler. I'm definitely going into this this barky part right here. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Nope, doesn't suck. Clean up our tortilla. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna beef rib you. Okay. And uh, you know, I always talk about this every time we make tacos. My buddy Corey Proctor, who um, used to play line for the Cowboys, he made fun of me uh, one time because I made these little tacos. So you got to go big. Yeah, absolutely, it's Texas. Plenty of beef there rib. Plenty of beef. And if you're gonna go big on beef rib, definitely don't skimp on the horseradish. This is definitely not gonna hide that smoke flavor, but it's gonna add a little something to it. It's gonna be and then, delicious is what it's gonna be. I love pickled onions. These are just some, some pickled onions and a little bit of red wine vinegar and sugar and all that good stuff. Didn't you make these? Actually, my 11-year-old daughter made them. Um, Ava's pickled red onions. We'll put the. Uh, this will also be uh, recipe. Will be down in the description below. Of course, you got to add some green so that your mom will be proud of you for eating your vegetables. Yep. Hit them with a little bit of chives, and then uh, probably the most important part, in in my opinion, of the entire taco is the uh, the spicy onion chicharron. That's right. So, where did you get these things from again? What country? What country? Uh, these are artisanal. Spicy onion chicharrones. Let yeah. me see what country they came from. They came from the country of Texas. Texas. Plano, Texas. Right on. Cool. So when we made this, it uh, we actually just evolved to the spicy uh, funyuns. Yeah, yeah. The 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 funyun was a uh, you know a fun idea, no pun intended, and uh, you know people laugh about it all the time, and uh, you know some of the names that people have 
tried to give us for this taco are pretty interesting, <laughs> to well, say the least. a lady asked me at Fort Worth Food and Wine, she said, uh, who comes up with this stuff? And you know, we told her we did. She says, how'd you come up with it? And I said, well, just walk into Walmart super high and <laughs> with the munchies. And that was a complete joke, by the way. But it does remind us, we do need a name for this taco and we can't come up with it. So your job is to go down in the comments and tell us what we should call this taco. Yeah, for sure. But I'm on, I think we gotta try it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You don't have to ask me twice. Ooh, these are big. Cheers. Cheers. Out of my, doesn't suck. That truffle, horseradish cream right off the bat. Mm. The smoke and the bark on those beef ribs is amazing. That milsko really, really does its its job well. Uh, the pickled onions though, give it a little bit of acid, cuts through some of the fat. That was a new element that we added this fourth go round. <laughs> but I still think the, uh, the chicharron may be the winner for me. Oh, 100%. So. Well, and by the way, where that came from, it's a thing in Texas to do like crushed hot Cheetos on the lote and stuff like that. It's it's very pretty, pops, gives it the crunch element. And we thought if we're going from the fried onions, we uh, onion rings we used to do, let's, let's go to Funyuns, which we did, now we're going to the hot Funyuns. So there's the evolution. Just following suit. <clears throat> so. Super good. Well, man, I can't thank you enough for being here. It's been a ton of fun. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great time. You guys got to go to Myers Garden in Dallas. Um, they have the tallest bartenders, not only in Dallas or Texas, but the world. And that's no joke. Um, so, <laughs> and then go get yourself a, ask, ask for a turtle bite shot. Is that right? That's what it turtle is, bite, right? turtle bite. It is, uh, it's the, it's the house shot and it will, uh, it will definitely bite you for well, sure. Before we roll, tell the story of that because it's super interesting. Uh, so the the story of the turtle bite, the original Myers Garden, which is uh, about 140 years old, um, like the first, the the OG, the first uh, licensed bar, I believe, in Dallas County was was Myers Garden. It was in downtown Dallas, uh, and they had a petting zoo, and uh, apparently a a child got his finger bitten off by a snapping turtle. So now we have a shot called a uh, turtle bite. It's got some habanero tequila and some pineapple juice and it's really good. Delicious. It's uh, I describe Myers Garden as like a, I don't know, like the cool upscale trendy sports bar. It's yep. a fun hangout. So sure. you guys check it out. But thanks for being here again. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you like what we're doing, we're dropping weekly cooking videos. Um, thank you guys for being here. See y'all next time.